Hey what's up guys, so WWDC was live a few hours ago and one of the big points surrounding the keynote was iOS 15 and I'm sure a lot of people are super excited for this to release in the fall. So let's go ahead and dive into what's new with iOS 15. Okay so to start things off we've got spatial audio which is going to help those conversations feel like the person is actually there with you. There's also voice isolation which is going to of course focus on the person's voice versus the background that's surrounding them and this should make the experience on a FaceTime call even better. Next up was grid view, so if you have multiple people on a FaceTime call, everyone's face is going to be on a tile, and whoever is speaking, their tile is going to be highlighted so you will know who is actually talking. Next up was portrait mode, which is going to be able to blur the background on you during your FaceTime calls, which is definitely going to make those calls a little bit more personal. Next up was FaceTime link, which this one was very exciting. It essentially organizes a FaceTime call that syncs with all the individual's calendars. Android devices can also join in on these calls, which is nice because obviously not everybody has an iPhone, and this is going to be huge for companies that traditionally use Zoom or WebEx. Now will they survive after this? We'll just have to wait and see. Next is SharePlay where you can share content with your friends and family, whether that's videos or music, and you can watch it live together, which this sounds like a great idea, and I think a lot of people are really going to like this. Next up was Live Text where you can point your camera to something with text on it and drag and copy and place that text wherever you'd like. I really I wish this was available when I was in university because instead of typing like a madman, I could just grab the text from the slideshows and place it into the pages app. Now on to messages. Now this one was a minor upgrade, but basically friends can recommend things to you and those recommendations can pop up in other apps. For example, if someone shares a news article with you and you don't have time to read it right away, then you can open it up in the news app later when you actually do have time and read that recommended article. Next up was focus. Now this organizes notifications and groups them together to minimize distress. Distractions. Now when you turn focus mode on, it's also going to turn do not disturb on and it's going to give you a summary for your notifications and while do not disturb is on, it's actually going to notify the people that are texting you that you have it on so that they don't think that you're ignoring them even if you are. Now you can also tailor your notifications as well using the focus feature and the example that they used at the keynote was that if you're at work, you can choose to only allow work notifications like a text from your boss or maybe a company email but it's going to block out non-work related pop pop-ups on your phone. There's also a personal option and a sleep option as well. Now onto the weather app, so it's getting a new design and an animated background with new weather graphics which gives a lot of detail. So if you're someone who really likes to get into the nitty gritty details of the weather, this is going to be great. And weather maps were added as well. Next up we got an update to memories in the photos app. So they're calling this update memory mixes. It's a pretty cool update where you can add music to your memory slideshow and make it a little bit more memorable. See what I did there? Next up is is the wallet app. Now last year at WWDC they announced digital car keys and it's slowly rolling out into different models and this basically allows you to unlock and start your car if it's compatible. And the big addition to the wallet this year is that you're going to be able to add your ID directly to the wallet app which this is absolutely huge. As more and more places accept a digital form of your ID it's going to be super convenient to just have it right in the wallet app. And they also added support for a digital house key as well so very soon you won't have to carry a physical key for your car and house and you won't even have to carry your physical ID. We are truly living in the digital age. In the last major update coming to iOS 15 that was mentioned at the keynote is the Maps app. It's getting a visual refresh with an elevated map model and it looks absolutely stunning. Being able to see the landscape in a 3D model is going to make the driving experience a little bit better when you're using the Maps app. The added detail definitely makes this the best looking map app in my opinion. Now this is all great but unfortunately it's only going to be available in big cities, but eventually down the line I would assume they want to bring this over to as many places as possible, but it is very exciting especially if you are planning on visiting some of these big cities. And that's everything new with iOS 15. So guys I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did make sure you like and subscribe, leave a comment down below of what you are most excited for with iOS 15. I gotta say mine was probably live text because that's just the feature that I've wanted Apple to bring to their software for so long and it would have saved me a ton of time back in university and I'm sure a lot of people are really going to like this feature. I know it was available with third party apps but it just makes it a lot easier that it's built right into iOS. But anyways that's it for the video. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys all have a great day and I will see you guys in the next video.